reason why we uh, took off with the, or the reason why I decided to use FN satellites rather than some of the others that are up there is because this is something that even if you can't contact one, you can hear a FN satellite on your handy talkie many times, especially now with the uh, space station with a um, repeater back on board again. That was, a, that was one of my favorite uh, satellite activities back in the day when that was active in um, 2007, 2008, through 2010, and then all of a sudden it didn't work anymore. They just put one back in in September. And so uh, this gives you an opportunity, we'll give you enough information to be able to walk out of here and at least hear it, if not work it with a handy talkie, with a mobile um, radio, or like uh, Robert over there um, in 4XDO with that, uh, with that uh, um, multi-band receiver uh, uh, radio he's got. We're going to cover terms. Terms are going to be important because one of the things we miss out a lot on in um, a lot of the satellite instruction books and things like that is they kind of leave one or two terms out and then they start using it somewhere down the line. You're like, what in the world did that mean? So we're going to work on that a little bit. Talk a little bit about equipment. We're not going to kill that a whole lot, but we're going to give some give you some ideas of what type of equipment you want to have to be able to get on these uh, FM satellites talk about the uh, four main usable FM satellites, the best ones to use right now. Then we're going to get into the Doppler effect. Doppler effect is always one of the toughest subjects here. Um, I've been studying that again for the, like, the last three months so I can better understand it, better try to describe it, keep our fingers crossed that there's enough ways to, um, to push this along. Doppler is very important to you because it's, it's what's going to help you stay on the right frequency to be able to talk to the satellite. We'll talk about some resources for satellite passes and tracking the satellites. Then uh, we'll, um, we'll dig into um, a little more about tracking the satellites. We'll talk about the uh, exchange you'll have when you do get on a satellite and try to, um, and try to talk. And you'll hear it a lot when you're, um, when you're, ta when you're listening. And uh, also included in that, during that time, I'm going to play the um, play some audio from some contacts I made with some school uh, with some school kids back in 2010 up at Antioch Elementary. A lot of the kids made contact there, and uh, we lucked out. Two satellites came over within 30 minutes of each other. It's pretty cool. So they got to talk uh, through one satellite and got to uh, talk to another. And a guy up in Ohio recorded the entire thing. So it's kind of neat. And then. Uh, Finally, I'll leave you with the frequencies of the uh, most popular satellites. I will be mailing out this presentation as well as, um, as, well as links to some of, the better, um, some of the better resources that are out there. Okay, terms. One of the things that, one of the things that used to confuse me was, uh, okay, which one do I transmit on? Which one do I receive on? They kept using uplink and downlink. Okay, uplink you are sending your signal up to the satellite. Okay, so that's your transmit frequency. Downlink frequency, that's the one you're listening to. That's your receive frequency. Doppler effect. Quick term, we're going to be uh, expanding on this uh, definition quite a bit. The uh, book definition for uh, AMSAT was the apparent drift in frequency in relation to the speed of an object relative to your position. The higher the, the, higher the frequency, the greater the effect. One of the things you'll see is for um, VHF, the two meter band, you don't really worry about uh, the Doppler as much using FM in particular, but to stay on frequency for um, listening or um, transmitting when you're on 70 centimeter, you have, to, um, you have to adjust that frequency during the course of the um, satellite pass. Maidenhead grid square, it's a positioning system for um, giving you your position. Okaloosa County is Echo Mike 60. Now, if you go across the uh, Alabama border, you're in Echo Mike 61. Why is this important to you? Because FM satellites are very, very quick uh, contacts because it's a very scarce resource. Where on HF radio, you use a um, signal report as information sent to, um, to say that you've done something, you exchanged some information during a um, contact. The Maidenhead grid square is what you use for um, VHF and above to um, kind of confirm or send information along the contact. And we'll see, um, we'll see the standard uh, contact is really quick, really moves fast, but it's still pretty neat. All the FM satellites we'll be talking about today are in low Earth orbit. 
these are the um, these are between about well I say 370 to um, 1200 miles that's because this is part of an old presentation now with the ISS back up again they're down at about uh, 250 miles I believe above the surface okay these will be important for later the next three terms here TCA time of closest approach that's when the satellite is going to be closest to you and it's also when it's a in its highest point on the sky, in the sky. If the satellite's over on the horizon, that's about as far away as it's going to get. The closer it gets to you, the higher up it gets, which means um, if it goes right over the top of your head, you're only about 200 miles from that thing. Um, AOS, acquisition of signal. Kind of a uh, fancy term is saying that's when it, uh, that's when the um, satellite comes above the horizon. LOS, loss of signal. Another a fancy way of saying it went back below horizon. So let's say your satellite is doing one of these numbers. You kind of see my hand sweeping. It comes up over here. That's your AOS position when it comes above the horizon. It comes up uh, as high as it's going to go. That's your time of closest approach, TCA. And then when it sets, it'll be the um, loss signal. Finally, the uh, term fading tough part about using the um, about using a handy talkie or a um, or a vertical antenna like I like I use them on the uh, on satellites from time to time is the uh, satellite itself spins could be slow could be a little faster so while you have your vertical antenna up like that that satellite is spinning like this and as you probably remember from way back in your um, tech exam the best way for um, the best best way for two antennas to work together is if they're um, polarized the same way, like this. When that satellite spinning and it gets like this, it kind of the signal kind of fades out a little bit. So that's where that fading comes from. Let's talk about equipment. Most of you have at least half the equipment you need to um, actually make a contact on the um, International Space Station. You have to have radios um, capable of transmitting on transmitting and uh, on two meter. This is like so this is part of, part of an old display. I should uh, change this up. Transmitting or receiving on two meters and listening and transmitting on uh, or transmitting on uh, seven centimeters at the same time. That's the um, that's the best way to go. You'll also on the, under the current content um, under the current satellites you will need a tone capability. Not a big deal now. Everybody tends to have to tones on their radios. But back about 20 years ago, there were some, there were rigs out there without tones, and that uh, doesn't work too well for the satellites we'll be looking at. Uh, the both things that cheap the cheap radio and the Waxons, a little more expensive but nice nice as well. You can um, they have um, VHF UHF on there, so you can work with those. A lot of people will use two radios. There's an advantage to using two handy talkies. When you're talking on one, and if you have an earphone in listening to the other, you can actually hear yourself talk through the satellite. It really is the best way to work if you've got that um, if you've got that much capability, because then you can hear how solid you're getting into the um, into the uh, satellite. And then, um, so like I say on the uh, slide, it's even better when you can listen while you can listen while transmitting. Mobile rigs can work too. I have made satellite contacts on um, mobile rigs. I've talked to the ISS on a um, on a mobile rig by accident. But uh, almost anything can work and get you up there. You also must have some way to find out when a satellite is going to be available. It doesn't do you it doesn't do you a whole lot of good to have all that uh, all your radios going and stuff like that and not be able to hear a um, and not be able to hear a satellite coming, or not know when the satellite's going to go up, be up. You can monitor, but uh, it's a little better if you um, if you can um, program that, or excuse me, find out when they're going to uh, come up above the horizon. Things you need: the uh, I would suggest if you're going to try to use your handy talkie, and it's not the optimal way to go, but can be used. Get a little bit nicer um, antenna. This is not the stock antenna for the um, for this Kenwood model. It's a little bit better, and but it works. Um, but has, uh, I've heard the uh, ISS before. I've heard, um, I, I'm sorry, uh, AO92 
using this radio before? Simply this way. Chuck, uh, Chuck KK4GIS, his first uh, encounter with a satellite was using his handy talkie with just a slightly better than stock antenna. Now to be able to um, confirm your contacts, you'll need some type of logging capability so you can um, have the contact. Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can try pencil and paper, but believe me, if you're already trying to hold the um, handy talkie or using one of these types of antennas, trying to spin that around a little bit, yeah, you, you already got it and then try to push the talk. You've already got a lot going on. So I highly suggest using a, um, using a voice recorder. Now, there are plenty of options there. You can use the one on your phone. Most of your phones have those now. A number of, uh, a number of uh, radios these days also have voice recorders. I know the uh, IC9700 does. There's a number of uh, Ken, I'm sorry, Yezu radios I know of that have, um, that have recording capability, even in handy talkies. And so that, uh, that's one less thing you have to do. If you know what time the recording started, then everything else is just a timer after that. It's a nice to have stuff. Computer controlled radios and um, directional antennas. Yeah, if you get the uh, having that ASL um, rotor so it can point automatically point directly at those satellites, that's the way to do it. I don't have one of those, maybe someday. Here are the current usable satellites um, for FM that I, that I believe are the best ones for uh, new, uh, new folks to use for maybe your first one. The SO50, which is a Saudi sat launched in the 2002. Really nice radio. Oh, I'm sorry, very nice uh, satellite. I've used it many times. The, uh, some of the um, recording you'll hear later, I believe was done on that one off of that one. They have an uplink of, uh, of two meters and a downlink of um, 70 centimeters. All these satellites I'm showing you new ha now have a tone. So you have like the uh, local repeaters because all a satellite is is just a repeater on a real high, um, with a real big, a real high antenna. Use a tone, 67.0 hertz for just talking. Now, if on the rare occasion the, there's nobody already talking on SO50, you have to use another tone just to turn it on. You probably won't encounter this very often, but you, but, uh, you will need to uh, set up one channel that has the, um, has the 74.4 hertz uh, tone to be able to turn it on. Like I say, it won't happen very much over the United States, but if you were on a, um, if you took a cruise somewhere out in the Pacific, maybe over to um, Hawaii or something like that, you might find yourself with the, uh, with the um, satellite not on. That's how you turn it on. Two recent launches are AO91 and AO92. Those are uh, two of our AMSAT CubeSat um, satellites that are up there. Not very big. They're about uh, they're about uh, 20 um, centimeters long width and um, depth. But uh, they're doing a decent job up there. You've got to the, uh, meet the frequencies, but both of those need um, a 67 hertz, uh, hertz uh, tone as well. And then the ISS repeater just started up this month. It was down for about three days this past weekend. I was kind of surprised about that, and uh, but it's uh, it's back up again. But there are a number of others available, some on FM, and many on um, their uh, variable transponder. I'm sorry, linear transponders that uh, use a sideband. Those use a lot more specialized radio, and really not something we're going to cover in this uh, presentation tonight. Okay, one of the big things here is the Doppler effect. If uh, if there was no Doppler effect, all you'd have to do is turn on, uh, tune into these two these uh, frequencies that we have right there, and you'd be ready to go. But it doesn't quite work that way. The Doppler effect, uh, by definition here, is uh, makes a transmitter's frequency appear higher when it's moving towards you and lower when it's moving away. Very similar to the way a tree. If you're uh, listening to a train pass you and he's blowing his whistle and the um, and you hear that transmitter, the horn, sounds really high when he's uh, over here coming at you. And about the time he passes you, it starts going, um, the uh, tone starts going low. Works the same thing, same way with radio waves. And the faster it's moving, the greater the effect. So when a, um, when a pass starts and satellite's moving towards you, you'll have your downlink frequency, your listening frequency, um, 
higher than when um, when satellites publish frequencies. Don't worry, we'll have a we'll have a series of, uh, of frequencies that tell you how to uh, how to run through those instead of uh, trying to guess for yourself. And then um, because that transmitter is uh, moving very fast towards us, so as we're trying to listen to that transmitter, that that uh, rate that frequency is going to be high. Your uplink frequency, your transmitter, it, you're going to set low. Why are you going to do that? Because um, when he's moving fast, so he is going to hear you high. But he only has one frequency, so you can't tune it to the same frequency that guy has. You have to tune it a little bit low, so when it gets to him high, it's on his frequency. You'll see you'll see the way that works when I show you some examples of um, of the set of the uh, satellite frequencies you tune into your radio. When the satellite is at its highest point in the sky, say it's uh, whatever, when it's at its highest point, it doesn't, it is not really moving relative to you. It's moving fast, back and forth, but moving distant or coming towards you, it stopped, it's basically stopped moving for a split second. And that's when those frequencies that you see are exactly on. That's when, when it's at its highest point. That's when that um, SO50 will be uh, 145.850 and 436.950, or uh, 95, 795. But as soon as it gets past that point, it starts moving away from you again. So now the Doppler, Doppler effect starts uh, kicking back in. And then as the pass is ending, the satellite is moving way away from you, so your listening frequency will now be below the published frequency and your transmitting frequency will be above it. I'm going to open up for questions because this is always a tough part. If there's a question you have that might make you understand better because of my butchered uh, explanation here, let me know, raise a hand or whatever. The cool thing about this is I'm going to give you the frequency, the um, most needed frequencies for these um, for these satellites that will take into account the Doppler as you can run through about five channels or so. Ron, KI4ZER. Yes. Hey, this is DJ. So general question about that. Uh, is there an automated program that I can install onto my PC or to my Mac that would adjust the frequencies as the satellite passes overhead if I tie that into my uh, remote amateur radio? Wow, you've seen my presentation already. Yes, there is. And we'll talk about, talk about a few of the examples of those. And uh, after I'm done, the, uh, when I send out a page of links and stuff like that, I'll send, you, um, I'll send you links to some of the different programs that are out there. Ham Radio Deluxe has that capability, as does uh, uh, PCSAT32, which is an AMSAT um, item. If you have a Mac, Mac has a really nice program that AMSAT sells. Um, for for the Macintosh as well, and they're, um, they're what they'll also do for you is they'll also they also have the capability to um, to run your um, rotors, both uh, azimuth and um, and uh, elevation. So yeah, so the long answer is yes, yes, they, they, yes, there are, and I use them quite a bit. Thank you. This slide. This slide right here describes three different passes of the AO92. Um, the uh, can you guys see an arrow on my screen or no? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Where my arrow is right now, that is a high pass. Why do I call it a high pass? Because the um, your TCA is going to be 80 degrees. I mean that's 10 degrees from straight over your head. Now there's a reason I throw throw this up here. Um, it's important to know what's going on during the um, during one of these uh, or during a number of these uh, passes. For this one, the uh, satellite came across came above the horizon at uh, 3:45 um, in the morning, and um, elevation, of course, is zero. Your uplink frequency. Now, keep in mind the um, the regular uplink frequency for this uh, or transmit frequency is 4:35. 350. That's your publish. You can see where, where it is right here. Coincidentally, under TCA, like we talked about before. But to um, but to be able to um, 
appear at that frequency to the satellite, keep in mind my transmitter here, and he's moving really fast towards me. So, um, so I have to be, um, so I have to be transmitting to such as such that when he hears me, it appears that uh, I'm on um, on uh, 435.350. So for the transmit frequency, that's actually below the published frequency, down at 435.3398, close enough to the net to the uh, to um, to uh, 340 to be happy with. The downlink for the uh, satellite actually calculated for um, actually calculated for Doppler is uh, 145.8834. Now, the reason why I did them, did the uh, numbers this way is because you're going to see the progression of the uh, Doppler effect as the uh, as the um, satellite goes through the sky. This is where the satellite is right now. The next one, this one right here, is about this point right here. Um, this elevation is about 14 degrees. I'm sorry, about right here, about 14 degrees. It took it took nearly three minutes to go from here to here as far as the way the satellite would appear on the ground or tend to be on the ground. And you notice that uh, because it was pretty quick, it didn't, uh, it didn't, um, they're still moving at you about the same rate, but they didn't change much on the, um, on the um, Doppler, on the Doppler effect. Notice not a, not a huge change here. But then as he starts moving across, the, um, up to about 59 degrees up, and that's another um, that's another three or two and a half minutes later, approximately here. The Doppler effect continues to move. Your um, your uplink frequency is now um, your transmit frequency is now moved up to uh, 435.345, and your downlink frequency is moved down to um, at a at a smaller rate because two meters is 145.8817. Then when it's directly overhead, that's when the published frequencies are good to go. Okay, you're thinking, how do I do this? What do I do? Um, I would suggest programming these frequencies into your radios. The walk sign is particularly nice because you could program a, um, an uplink frequency on, um, on uh, 70 centimeters and a downlink frequency on, a, um, on um, two meters. So you can make one channel for each one of these steps as it goes across the sky. And once it passes uh, directly over or as high as it's going to get, then it um, then the um, frequency changes continue as the satellite starts moving away from you relative to your position. And until it hits the horizon and you'll notice that, uh, that it's uh, That the, set, that the uh, frequency continues to go up on the uplink side and down on the downlink side. The question here is, how do you know when to change that channel? And the thing is, that's for this for the uh, for these particular satellites. That's why um, being able to hear your transmission at the same time as um, well hearing your transmission is a good thing because. Um, you don't know you, you won't know if all you do is talk and don't hear yourself talking because your downlink will will sound pretty close to um pretty good notice that there that for two meter on the downlink it's only like uh it's only like six uh, kilohertz from one end of the from the start of the pass to the other but now when you're trying to transmit you'll notice there's about uh, 40 kilohertz how wide is the um how wide is an fm signal ish remembering back from your uh, tech class, about three to five kilohertz. Works great for the, uh, look, works great for uh, VHF, no big deal there. But as you're, um, as you're trying to transmit, 40 kilohertz, you leave that on one frequency, it's not gonna get to, um, you're not gonna be able to utilize that entire satellite. So you do have to listen as on the downlink as it comes, uh, comes in. The only reason the other um, satellite uh, that I use the other um, examples here, a medium um, pass that shows a uh, TCA or closest point of, um, of 51 um, degrees above the horizon. And just kind of give you a feel of how, 
of how high above the horizon each one of these things is. The, um, if you can see my arm, how high it is right now, that's at about 80 degrees. This is about 55, and that's the median pass. Now I show one that, and the very bottom here shows one that just barely gets above the horizon. Um, oh man, I knew I blew something away. Hold on. Apparently this did not, that, that did not save. The last one here is only supposed to be about 16, um, 16 degrees above the horizon. So I apologize for having blown that. I'll note that down to fix that before it comes out to you. When a satellite's really low on the horizon like that, you don't have very much uh, usable time. I do know that the times that the uh, that the uh, times were um, uh, times are messed up too. I'll uh, fix that one. It's not you don't have very much time to use on a low um, on a low pass like that. But probably the most important thing to being able to make the satellite contacts is using your antenna properly. This gives you the examples of the um, of the options you may have as far as as far as antennas trying to work uh, work satellites. A uh, Yagi's real nice, and that's what I have right here. And uh, you point that directly at the satellite and get your best signal that way. Now, on the um, for a handy talkie, don't point that antenna to the um, at the uh, at the satellite, as you all probably remember from your courses and. Um, your knowledge base. If you point a, um, if you point an antenna at somebody like this, you're getting nothing off the end of that antenna. You see the way the, uh, you see the way this is uh, sending all of its signal from the side up to the uh, satellite there. So that's how you would use your handy talkie. And then a car, if you're using your mobile on a car, that's a, uh, that's a vertical antenna with a, um, but it's omnidirectional. So just you don't have to do anything special there. Although I will say that uh, in this example, the antenna being on the bumper is less effective than if it were up in a higher spot on the car. Anybody have any questions about the uh, about antennas at this point? Because I'm sure you probably have other ones that you're using. Okay, now get. Now we're going to get into the um, into what to, how to find some of this stuff yourself, because you'll have a lot of resources just on this presentation alone. After I fix that last slide, to understand what's going on as the satellites go across and uh, how they work. But the um, but uh, for example, AMSAT has a great uh, predictor tool, and um, Ham Radio Deluxe is also a very good program for using. Um, or checking these out. I see, let's see. Uh, Dave is right that uh, you're not going to get a lot of gain because it is an omnidirectional antenna on the car. But uh, you should be able to, um, you should be able to uh, compensate with that both by reception and uh, power. Keep it in mind that uh, the one of the great advantages you have is when the when the satellite is above the horizon, your line of sight is being affected by very little at that point. Now, granted, you would always prefer a, um, you know, if you had your options, you would have a um, directional beam antenna that can um, do both elevation and uh, azimuth. This, uh, but uh, with the FM satellites, even the um, vertical antenna on the car will work and surprisingly well for the ISS for that matter. Um, going back to the resources for finding satellite passes, both, um, both Apple and Android have great apps for um, satellite tracking and uh, satellite uh, and satellite capability. If you go in to search your um, different um, app stores, just put in satellite uh, amateur satellite tracking and you'll usually get the, um, you'll, get, you'll get a group of uh, different, of different uh, apps that will work for you. Here's an example of the AMSAT pass predict, uh, predictor. Not sure how well you can see that at this point, but uh, let's see. Did that mess up anybody's view? 
Yeah, we've got a bunch of gray rectangles over it right now. Okay. Better, thank you. Okay. The, uh, this will, you put in information here, the, um, let's see, I remember the, pick the satellite. They will use your, um, they will use your grid square to uh, figure out where you are. And then it will give you uh, information. It will give you uh, Latin long. And then uh, when you picked out the satellite, told it where you are, and hit, uh, I believe that's the uh, predict. Then you'll get this uh, chart over here showing you the next 10 um, passes that, are, that would be visible from your location. Granted, for a lot of us, the ISS during certain times is, is uh, truly visible. Most of these satellites are way too small to ever be seen. It's just that it would be within um, it would be within um, the uh, within sight of them if they were visible. Ham Radio Deluxe, their satellite program has all sorts of things you can use. It has a um, it has the um, bullseye chart. It has a it has a simple map. Notice the A and the L standing for AOS and um, LOS. So here's where we come up and here's where we go down. And also a uh, elevation and time chart that tells you when it was, uh, when it would be um, coming over. While we're on this um, bullseye chart, you'll see this in a lot of prediction programs. The uh, part of it is pretty straightforward. North, south, east, west. Okay, that's direction. So if the satellite is on this green line about here, you know it's at about uh, 45 degrees. However, these circles here, that's not a distance from you. It's actually the, um, it's actually the, um, the uh, elevation. You'll notice that uh, you have uh, degree markers here, 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and um, then there's the center bullseye. So this tells you how high to, um, how high to um, raise your antenna if you have a directional antenna. So if you have one of these directional antennas like this, and it tells you to, um, it tells you the, um, that the, and it tells you that the uh, satellite is uh, 45 degrees above the horizon. You would have approximately that angle to get the, um, to get the satellite. I think you guys can see me from there. Although I lost my picture. That bullseye, once you learn to use it, is a very, very handy tool. Now, here's an example of a um, iOS, um, a, a, an Apple app. Um, this is uh, Sat. I'll get you to name this one. It's up, but you'll notice it has the bullseyes as well. Zero, 30, um, 60, and uh, directly overhead. This is an example of a pass that occurred on um, Monday, 22 January, 2018. And uh, here's what occurred during that pass. It started off from the north here and um, similar to where it would come over, come up here if you were looking at the horizon, if that was a 90 degree horizon. And the, um, the frequency for AO91 when it came above to um, when it came up to uh, stay on um, the only the contacts is uh, 435 240 for transmit, receive at 145.960. You'll see across here as the satellite goes up that the um, that while the um, UHF frequency changes quite a bit, about five kilohertz per step. We just go ahead and leave the uh, VHF um, right where it is. You might you might have a little bit of weak signal from the on the uh, VHF side on either end, but by leaving it in the center, you can um, because of the width of the um, of the of an FM signal, you should be able to hear it all the way through. So all you're really focusing on is changing the uh, UHF um, frequency along the pass. Four thirty-five, two forty-five. 435, 250, when it hit its peak there, when it hit its uh, TCA, 
Now it starts going down. UHF at 435.255 and then 435.260 as it goes below the horizon. Here is your, um, here's your published frequencies below. Notice these two are exactly the same as the, um, as the frequency when it hits its highest point. 435.250, 145.960. And as I say, when you're, when you're tracking it, be ready for the tumble. Just because the um, signal fades a little bit, doesn't mean you're um, doesn't mean you're aimed the wrong direction with your handy talky like this or your um, or your um, yaggy like that. It could just be it's gone a little crazy on you. And those do tumble in, in space. They don't have a there are not a lot of expensive systems keeping them straight like some of the older ones did. Now here's an example of um, what you'll be doing to make a standard QSO. I will admit that I listen to um, I listen to satellite uh, QSOs for probably about six months before I got guts enough to try one myself. Um, I just kind of learned and listened, listened and learned. But here's what uh, here's what you'll hear on the radio. There's an opportunity for a small break in transmission. Someone's listening, and that's when they're going to try to make their contact. And how will they do it? Well, like in this case. You'll say your call sign in grid square in this uh, in this example here. Uh, Kilo India 5, Foxtrot Romeo, Echo Mike 60. And usually about that fast to try to get it in there. Then if someone responds, this is a case where we get uh, the uh, ARRL headquarters up at uh, up in uh, Connecticut. They might say uh, uh, KI5 FR, Whiskey 1, Alpha Whiskey, Fox, Fox November 31. That's their grid square up in Connecticut. And then I'll say, Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey, Kilo India Five Foxtrot Romeo QSL. That's basically what you do on FM. There's not a lot of talking on there because everyone's trying to make the contact to say they've done it. Um, they're a scarce resource and they're very busy as well. So, a couple of a couple of rules that guidelines. I won't say rules. Say guidelines. Don't call CQ. Do not do that. It's kind of like calling CQ on your local repeater, and you probably saw that that's not what you do there either. CQs take a long time, and um, there are a lot of people trying to make contacts, and it takes a lot of space out there. And no long QSOs. There are some exceptions to this. Um, not last summer, because well, we were all stuck here at home. The summer before last, I was in North Carolina. And we had two simultaneous satellites come across, one about five minutes before the other. Well, I didn't have my radio set up for the first one that came across, so I set it up for the second one. And I went ahead and got on and got a contact with a guy in Pennsylvania, if I remember correctly. He and I, we do the quick, uh, we do the quick QSO like above, and we stop and we listen for anybody else. Nobody's on that frequency. So... We came back, we talked a little bit. We would get plenty of breaks because we do not want to hog that um, resource, but nobody was on it. Um, we believe what happened was everyone went to the first one and was working that, and uh, we actually had a real life QSO, which is extremely rare on FM and not advised that, um, unless a situation like that shows up. And like I say, we gave lots of breaks to make sure that anybody who needed uh, um, contact would get one. Long QSOs are for the um, for the transponder satellites that are uh, sideband. That's something to check out after you um, work this. The hassle with the um, with the sideband satellites is they really do require a um, radio with sideband capability, and those are not as common now as they used to be. The IC70, um, I'm sorry, the IC9700 is in current production, and that is a UVHF um, radio. The uh, the uh, IC9100 recently went out of production. That had the capability. The um, TS2000 from Kenwood was a really nice radio. I had one of those for many years and made hundreds of contact, satellite contacts on it. It's now out of production, but you can find a lot of those on the uh, open market as well. <clears throat> the um, Another recent vintage is the, um, is the Yezu FT847. That was a satellite design radio, and uh, after a couple of glitches in the first production run, they really got that thing right, and there are people who absolutely love that. Those are not cheap radios to pick up used. 
for the most part, they're down to, uh, they're down in the hundreds now. So that's uh, at least somewhat more workable. They were much more expensive when they first came out. So if you ever get a hankering to do um, sideband, those are the uh, most recent vintage radios that are um, available. The IC9700, as I said, is still in production. Now I'm going to show you, uh, um, now I'm going to have you listen to some um, contacts. What this, uh, what this um, is, is a uh, satellite presentation I did at Antioch Elementary School back in 2010. Had one of the kids who was my um, auto rotor. I gave her that, uh, I gave her my um, cell phone with the um, tracking device on there. And she used that to aim the satellite and did a great job as you'll hear from this example. So uh, you'll hear some, con we'll, I'll start this up. You'll hear some contacts. Um, let me know if you can't hear this when I start up. It may be a little tougher in the church there. Give me the thumbs up. Well, I, 
I didn't catch the names, no. Whiskey Charlie 7 Victory. Yeah, the audio is down a little bit on the school kids. That's why it's making it tough to copy. Okay, copy that. I think we got the antenna in better state now. Okay, I five that far. Next up is... Okay, I copied Tracy. Over. I'll go ahead and stop it there. Uh, school kids had a great time, and it was one of the students who was operating the antenna. You can see she kept it pretty steady because it's a very directional antenna. In fact, it was this antenna back here that, that we did that with, as well as uh, as well as working with this uh, with this handy talkie. Gosh, ten years ago, so uh, we really had a great time with it, and the, um, the kids enjoyed it. I've done that about three or four different times over the years, and. Uh, while it's nice to talk about, when the kids can go out there and put a hand on and um, do it, then it's great. Uh, one of the things we used to do from out at the firehouse on, when we would have our um, Sunday, op Sunday afternoon openings is um, have people make their first satellite contacts out there as well. And hopefully as COVID kind of dies down, we can start doing things like that again. Okay, and as, as I promised at the end of the uh, presentation here, We've got a list of uh, frequencies to work with to, um, for the satellites that I mentioned before. You'll notice here that, uh, that uh, this, was, this is set up for um, a person's radio who could do both the uh, transmit on one band, receive on the other. And you'll notice that uh, he kept uh, the VHF frequency the same all the way through, and the UHF, UHF frequency changed by 5, um, five uh, kilohertz all the way through. The uh, one in bold here is the published frequency in which you would use at the highest point. He kept, excuse me, he kept one, um, one channel in here for the 74, oops, for that uh, 74 hertz tone in case he needed to turn the um, radio back on again. So uh, that's how he programmed that radio for SO50. Here are the frequencies for the uh, new ISS crossband repeater. Similar to what uh, similar to what this guy did up here, just use um, 145.990 for an uplink and uh, 67 for the hertz, and it can be used on all the channels. And here are the um, Doppler affected frequencies as it goes across the sky. The uh, uplink is the transmit frequency of 145.99, and here are your down downlink frequencies as you go up, as the satellite goes across. We have a similar chart over here for the uh, AO91 and uh, AO92. You notice he did the code um, for his uh, channel frequency uh, set up by using the uh, first two numbers as the, uh, the same as the uh, desi number designator for the satellites, which I thought was pretty smart. That pretty well ends the, um, ends the presentation as I have it. The, I highly encourage you to try AO91 um, or 92 on your um, handy talkie to start with. Um, use one of the use uh, some of the resources I'll send out uh, I'll send out before the end of the evening with uh, links to prediction tools, things like that, and then just listen the first time around. See if you can hear a satellite. If you can figure out where they, this will be how you learn where they are. Once you learn where they are, then you can start adjusting frequencies and, get it and staying on um, and trying to keep up with, um, with Doppler effect. And then you can try one out for yourself. What kind of questions I have now? This is Kevin yeah, for your ER, DJ. Uh, no real question, but uh, just for the group and everybody else in there, if you're looking for a reliable app to track satellites with, uh, one of the ones that I use is the Whiskey One Alpha November Tango Satellite Tracker. There's a free version and a pay version, and it gives both the rise and the set along with the max elevation on those, and whether it's FM or SSB. And when you click on them, you can click on a location of them and see where they are and if they're in your area and you're capable of hitting them. Uh, it has come in exceptionally handy as far as uh, communicating with the satellites or trying to hit them, even from just a handheld sitting out here in, in uh, Niceville. So you've had good luck with the uh, handheld listening to the satellites as well? 
Uh, here and there, I have a lot of foliage around me. Um, I'm not, actually not too far from you. You live down in Dana Point, and I'm up here over by the high school. So, um, that's right. I kind of got to walk out into the center median, if you will, where the trees and the power lines are not to have less interference. Uh, you know, it looks really awkward when I'm sitting out there in my lawn chair in the middle of the highway, in the middle of the road, basically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have, I've had some luck, uh, not so much some others. Sometimes when I'm uh, away from my area of living and I'm out and about in the uh, county, I have better luck with my uh, mobile rig and in conjunction with my handheld. That's cool because it's a lot of fun out there. And as you learn to use them, then you can go on um, you can go on your own de expedition, if you will. The, uh, the we have enough satellite operators in uh, Echo Mike Six Zero to where it's not one of the most needed um, grid squares. However, on the other side of, uh, I believe it's Lake Jackson up before um, Parala, the, uh, in, Echo Mi in Alabama and Echo Mike 6-1, 6 is a much rarer grid square. And so um, I've taken the, uh, one day I decided to combine the uh, running hobby and the um, ham radio hobby, went up there and uh, got one satellite pass early in the morning. Then, um, Oftentimes when a satellite comes across, it'll come across the second time in about an hour and a half. So uh, I went ahead and just put the radios back in the car, ran around the lake one time, it's about three and a half miles, and uh, got back with about uh, with about 45 to 50 minutes to spare and um, got, got it back out and made another set of contacts. About uh, 13 people got Echo Mike 6-1 uh, that day. And it was, uh, um, it was a pretty good, um, pretty good haul for a couple of FM satellites coming across. We got a question here from the church. Go ahead. Hi, Ron. Uh, on the first or second night that the ISS repeater was active, uh, I listened during the day, didn't hear anything on, on the frequency. And uh, about 11.30 at night, I had uh, put the bow phone on 437. And I heard at W3 working at XE1, on the ISS repeater that night about 11.30. Inside. Wow. Yeah, it's that's amazing. It's a 25 watt transmitter now on the ISS. So that'll be an easy one to hear. It's gonna be an awesome time with that one because that's gonna, that's gonna be a lot. Have they started considering the uh, ISS a satellite again? Because that was always kind of weird because it was a satellites are considered unmanned. So there was always kind of a difference. Not that it's that big a deal. Still cool to use a um, space-based uh, repeater of any sort, but uh, it's gonna it's gonna be every it's gonna be a lot of people's first contact now. I heard the uh, CWID today, but I didn't copy it. I was listening to the few so that was going on. It has been kind of up and down, so uh, I did not check today, but I know over the weekend, like I said, had three, uh, had three days worth of passes that uh, it wasn't heard. But they, they did do some uh, crew communication on it, and I believe they did a, um, I believe they did a school or, a, um, or some type of presentation type thing, so that might have been why it was down. Mike? I show you mute, muted. <laughs> there you are. Okay. I was using spacebar and apparently it wasn't working. Um, power levels. Uh, if if we hit it with the power from a base station, are we are we blasting into it too high and we're going to cut out all the bowfangs? Yes, that's the unfortunate thing on the uh, on the FM side. So we ought the, to use uh, power. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's best not to. I wish those guys didn't as much, but uh, they do. But uh, yeah, try to keep. It. But it, as far as trying to just capture effect, that's the biggest hassle. Is somebody is just blasting away, and you can only do so much with that. But uh, like I said, I've made many contacts. Um, many people have made their very first contact on five watts, and um, and uh, this thing's sitting behind me here. We we used to um, Richard. Um, KE4BFX, he made his first one there. Um, we made it, a number of people made their first satellite contacts using that equipment. And five watts. Thank you. 
that one bank of the uh, 2820 with about 10 satellite frequencies in, and I just scan through that. And uh, as satellites go by, I pick them up. And reach contacts yet? No, I'm still in the listening mode. <laughs> that, that's okay. Like I said, it was six months before I had guts enough to do it, to tell you the honest truth. And it was a lot of listening because it was like, I wanted to make, I wanted to try to make sure I could do it right. Ted. <laughs> Ted's comment was, I bet his battery didn't die that one, that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, but that's okay. It's a good lesson learned. For those of you not familiar, we were at a um, we were at a um, civic event, and uh, I had given away my um, spare radio to somebody else. And uh, the radio, it was actually it was actually this radio. I was using my probably eight or nine year old um, a lithium ion battery and it finally gave it up the ghost and uh, I was pretty useless without a spare battery. I now have um, two four amp uh, batteries to uh, for that thing now. They, they both work very, very well. But the uh, lesson learned is if you're going to do some type of event where you need the radio, make sure and have us have some type of backup, whether it's spare radio or spare batteries for the one you're using. Ron, do you uh, have any recommendations on uh, uh, stuff of a card or whatever for uh, asking an elevation to fill on those tripods? Or are you just going to eyeball it a little bit? I basically eyeball it. Now, if you use a, if you use the full um, setup like a, a Yezu, I forget what the uh, prefix is, but it's a uh, 5500, I believe, is the uh, rotor and a controller card. Um, those those do an excellent job there are uh, so, some arduino solutions that i came across uh while i was researching about uh about um six weeks ago seven weeks ago that uh built in australia that uh, they built an entire um tracking system not the antennas included but the tracking system itself for um i want to say 150 to 200 Australian dollars. I don't know what that equated to in the U.S., but a lot of the equipment could be bought here. They also uh, showed an Arduino control on a um, on some old uh, Channel Master um, television antennas, using one for azimuth and one for uh, elevation. Uh, but i have not when I went to go look up the uh, pieces for it, uh, there were none available in the U.S. Probably have to keep an eye on eBay to get those. Uh, get those, but apparently it's pretty heavy duty. You can do a great job. Well, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and uh, call it a night and uh, look forward to trying to work uh, work satellites with you guys. At one point, I'm going to try to do a better job of getting those out. When the uh... Ted, you have something? Yeah, before we call it quits, has anybody heard if the church is going to be doing anything Halloween night? I've got a message out to, um, I've got a message out to Mark now, um, KK4BAZ, to, uh, see, to uh, see if we are. Okay. It probably won't be, but just in case. Yeah, I think it's, I figure it's probably somewhere around the 50-50 chance. Yeah. This is KF4ZER. Ron, this has been a great presentation. Um, not so much of a question, but more of a share, uh, if I'm allowed to at this moment in time, to share my screen. And what I can do is uh, share uh, from another ham who built stuff that he built an antenna for satellite tracking uh, that he got out of uh, Goodwill. It was pretty funny. He actually used a golf club, an old camera tripod, <laughs> a couple of Wuxons, uh, a, a, a UGV3R and a, G, U, uh, a 5DR Wuxon radio, and an <laughs> old cell phone uh, that he utilized in order to make uh, an ISS communication platform. It was actually really cool. Um, let's see if I can share my screen here. Hold on one second. Uh, while you're trying to work that, uh, there's a question over at the... Um... Oh, Go ahead. church. Go ahead. Ron, I just want to say thank you for a great presentation. 
also like to thank Bruce, who uh, who got here way before the rest of us to set, set this thing up. Um, and this is uh, one of my first times back, and to realize that Bruce had to be here to set things up, I, I just want to say appreciate it. Appreciate the folks who are doing stuff like that. We really need to find some folks to kind of help out to uh, to uh, to kind of take some of the uh, burden off these guys. They've been doing uh, they've been doing yeoman's work. So we uh, we need to all kind of learn a little bit more about uh, Zoom chat and see if we can uh, spread that fun well. We would appreciate that. All right, folks, so if you can see here, uh, this is actually my father, N0KBS, Bud Stewart, out there in St. Peter's, Missouri. And he went to Goodwill and got all this equipment, other than the radios and the microphones and the headset, obviously. And he built his own uh, aperture to communicate with satellites and the ISS, especially when the ISS came back online. And you can see he uh, upgraded from one radio to two radios, and he's running twin uh, UG 3DRs uh, by with Awokesome with a satellite tracking app at that moment in time. And he modified it onto a uh, rotating uh, old camera mount. He built all of this from scratch. He literally did this for like $15 from Goodwill one day. And here's his post on Facebook that talks about it's version 1.01 of the N0KBS port of satellite system. Made equipment pallet out of a plastic cutting board from the dollar store. It holds two handhelds, allows for full duplex comms. A recorder, so not as to miss that call sign during a hectic satellite QSO, as Ron was pointing out earlier. Uh, and Android phone running ISS tracker guide to pointing the antennas and connections to the antennas as well as two speaker mics, headphones. Also redesigned the antenna to mount better to allow for the polarization of the antennas. He built it from plumbing parts. Uh, works nice and smooth now. May swap out HCs for a full blue duplex mobile rig in the near future. Also considering incorporating a 1.2 gigahertz transfer mode for L on AO92. We'll attempt some on-air testing tomorrow. Weather permitting, cross your fingers. Uh, so when he built this stuff, he had he knew what he was doing. I mean, he's been a ham for many, many years since the 60s. Uh, however, this this apparatus that he has created has allowed him to communicate exceptionally with many of the satellites based off of just handhelds uh, from his backyard. And as you can see, uh, it's not a large backyard. He's got a lot of foils around power lines, uh, other homes and other interference capabilities, things like that. But he has made so many contacts on that uh, already, it's not even funny. And this is from a 70-year-old man who's uh, hard of hearing and everything else. But this is where I got my inspiration from to attempt to run around the county and try it with my mobile rig and my handheld in conjunction. So it can be done cheaply. It doesn't always have to be a professional grade satellite antenna that you're going to find online. Uh, I just wanted to share this with you guys in conjunction with what Ron was talking about, because this can be done for literally under a hundred dollars. Uh, if you already have most of the equipment. Some DJ of the, from um, I was going to say some of the equipment that or some of the uh, links that I will send you are going to be inexpensive uh, versions of these um, of these antennas you can work with as well. I mean, to the point where one is called a four dollar antenna. I think it'd be a little bit more than that, but it uh, but it uh, has a, a, the uh, similar Yagi Yagi approach for a two meter and um, seventy centimeter. And uh, probably the most expensive part you'll buy for it is the um, is the coax connector. Ron, on some of the listings of the satellite frequencies, it lists a beacon frequency. Is is that a CW frequency that's, that's used all the time? It's normally used all the time. You know, it, it varies by satellite. And it's not, some will be, um, some will be as simple as uh, a CW. One of the beacon, beacon frequencies is, or uh, let's see. Beacons and telemetry. Telemetry is another big one that you'll see a lot, and the telemetry happens a lot. The um, the uh, Fox Sats from uh, AMSAT, they have uh, they have a program on the AMSAT website that uh, you can download and monitor and send back information from the satellite. Helps kind of it helps them understand where their signals are going and stuff like that. 
So you've got all sorts of stuff, all sorts of data moving around that way. There are, there, there are some um, part-time APRS satellites that work up there. They try to D-STAR satellite, but I've not heard a lot of success with that one. Back over you, Mike. Yeah, I was just asking DJ whether that mount that he was showing his dad's mount was actually servo driven from a computer or whether it's still manually pointed. Oh, it's manually pointed on the uh, camera tripod. And then there was the other one, the first one that he had, which was servo driven. However, uh, he was having less than success at that and he chose to do manual control. Uh, he says he's faster at it. It's more uh, receptive to tracking the satellite. So he's got one hand on the microphone and one hand on the actual handle of the device and rotating and following the satellite manually as he's tracking on his app at the same time. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Ron? Ron, yes. I bought an uh, interface from India that controls the azimuth and elevation rotors and uh, it was only $50 plus $20 for shipping. So it really, really works great. Good tracking with uh, 14 element uh, Yaggies. Can you send that link out? I, I will send it. I'll send it to you and you can pass it on if you will. Okay, sure will. Okay, if there are no other questions, then we'll go ahead and we will close out this Tech Night meeting. Very successful. Thanks, Ron, for all your help, all your preparation. And uh, I'm sure you're going to get some more questions as more and more people get interested. <laughs> With right. the ISS now, everybody can do it. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody, for participating. Thanks to our new folks coming into the club. Uh, Suzanne, Raz, good to see you here. Hope to get you excited about this uh, hobby. All right. 73, everybody. We're going to close down the net. Thank you. Enjoy it, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Talk to you guys later. I'm good. Thank you. Well,